How's it going there guys? In this video we're going to be talking about the new Stella Vita by TubeTech. It's a very interesting device and I had certainly got high hopes for this as one of its main competitors, the ASI Air Plus, uh, is something that a lot of people love using, me included. But the main thing about it is it is restrictive. You are locked into ZWO products, generally speaking, if you want to use this system. The TubeTech Stella Vita, I nearly called it the Astro Station, it has been renamed to Stella Vita now. Uh, it offers actually control over just about anything by the looks of it. The app is well laid out, there's a hell of a lot of options in there. And it does show some promise, but, and this is a big but, uh, I, I really wanted to like this thing, and I'm sure maybe in the future I can, but as it stands, it needs a lot of work, and that's what we're going to talk about now. I had intended to make a full review for this and take you through all the features and show you how to use it and set it up and things like that. And I've recorded a lot of sections where I've had to just throw them all away because I couldn't even complete a session with this. So what I've instead opted to do is give you my thoughts about it, just, you know, one-to-one -one like this, and let you know I've been uh, writing down some notes throughout. So that's all this video is going to be, nothing flashy, no... No special edits or anything like that. It's going to be talking about this device and my experience with using it, which was overall negative. I'm going to be honest with you. It was overall negative, and I'm I'm sorry. I know TubeTech are trying with this thing, but I've just got to be honest with you at all times. Otherwise, what's my word worth? Do you know what I mean? Uh, so here it is. Let's give you it. If you want to hear, by the way, a, a, a much more favorable review from someone who used it and had a much better time with it than I did, then check out my friend Queeve the Lazy Geek. Uh, he will be posting a review on his channel shortly, if it's not already up, about his experience with, with this device. Uh, so it could be really interesting for you guys. And I really do urge you, by the way, to watch as much as you can about this. If it's something you're interested in, um, learn everything you possibly can before splashing out your cash. That's what I'd say. Get, get lots of different opinions. Anyway, let's dive in. So uh, my first thing that I found is uh, one of the important parts of setting up an Astro session is you are going to need access, generally speaking, to a way to set a pointing angle, be that, you know, putting in RA deck coordinates or how I traditionally like to do it, to be honest, either through an object browser, which does work on this, it's fully fledged, it's actually pretty good, or a planetarium, uh, which it also has in there. Some people have had luck with this that I've seen on other videos online, for me, I just could not get it to work. Uh, it was stuck at an equatorial location. So that is to say, I could see Polaris sat on the horizon, uh, which is nothing like where I am at, obviously. So uh, I couldn't use that. So that's that's the first thing. A totally desynced planetarium with no way to resync it. And I tried two different mounts on this thing, an AM5N and an AM5 as well, in the hopes that once connected, it would update. So that's the first one that it didn't work now. I found an issue with the AM5N uh, and AM5 standard in that I could not park the telescope with this. Um, so once I'd done trying to get myself polar aligned, more on that in a moment, uh, and I wanted to park back to the home position to change something out, uh, it instead slews to 60 degrees on an AM5N, or if you try and park on an AM5, it slews to 90 degrees at one side. So. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. You have got buttons inside the app where you can actually click. So once you know you turn your mount on, it's in its native home position. If you've reset it with a handset, like I did a hundred times throughout my testing of this thing, you can click and set as home position, set as park position. But the buttons seem to be decoration only. They don't do anything for me. So when I do hit park, it just goes to those diff you know these default positions that I mentioned before, which are no use to me. Now I realize again, everything I'm talking about here is likely things that can be fixed, or at least most of it can just be fixed with uh, software updates. There is a hardware problem that I'm also going to talk about. Uh, but please, you know, hang on. I'm going to go through this. Uh, so I found that I had incomplete controls and support for cameras. So in my case, I wanted to use this initially, you know, with the new QHY Minicam 8, as I've been itching to use that camera once again on something. Uh, as I've got other projects going on, that means that my other rigs are tied up. So that camera's just sat unused right now. 
no support for it yet fine i understand you know it's a brand new camera so i decided right i still want to go with mono so i put on my player one aries m pro uh with the filter wheel and everything and found that the filter wheels support is complete but the camera itself, uh, it wouldn't download frames in bin 1, it would only work in bin 2 and above. Um, let me just check my notes really quick. No dew heater controls, no fan speed controls, no cohesive readout of gain. It's just on a slider from 0 to 100, so you've got to interpret whether that's on the analog part of the scale or bleeding over into the digital part of the gain scale. And you can't use like play one's own graphs where you traditionally want to use like gain 120 for unity that's not an option you'd have to guess where on the 0 to 100 slider that would exist it just doesn't make sense uh to me on that and again also no control of offset either so that was a very uh, quite a very bad experience overall in that now uh, it's not like that with every camera it seems to be that zwo cameras are much better supported i had much better look with that, but as I say, I wanted to actually use uh, a mono camera, which for me means that I wanted to use my player one or the QHY and could ultimately use neither. So again, this is probably something that can just be sorted with drivers though. So I do want to stress that part, but it is worth mentioning. Now, one of the things that's a hardware issue, I think, and it comes in the box almost with a clue that it might be an issue is it comes bundled with this, a little Wi-Fi Comcast, Wi-Fi dongle effectively uh the wi-fi is incredibly weak like incredibly weak uh, i set this up outside of my observatory no more than five feet away uh, and i was losing connection when sat on my couch right here uh insanely weak so <laughs> i don't know why it's got this aerial it seems to be i doubt that it's connected to anything given how weak it is it's certainly nothing like the asi air which i know some people have complaints about the wi-fi on these two absolutely they do and mine's never been an issue so maybe i'm lucky maybe i'm unlucky with this one so check out other reviews see what they're saying about the wi-fi but for me it was perhaps the weakest wi-fi i've ever had and i mean that is even weaker than the asi air pro uh, which i thought was pretty weak so not good and also the dongle that they provide okay good the provided a dongle bad that it needs a dongle and even worse that it takes up one of your usb slots i mean you've only got four on the device you've got two usb 3s two usb 2s one of these has to be taken up just to solve the wi-fi issue uh it's unacceptable basically i would say in my case to even get my rig in a usable state i need all four of these I need more ideally but i need all four of these at least so i had to plug in a uh you know a, a multi-port adapter for this a hub um uh, it's just not on really I, I don't think anyway next point uh that's that's the real major issue though for me is is it's the whole way you communicate with this thing is through wi-fi and it's very very weak so i did have to use instead bridge mode uh, and make sure that my observatory door was left wide open <laughs> with literally line of sight to my router eight feet away uh, and then i could connect through my phone but it's just something that clearly needs work or i've got a duff unit one of those now uh another point that it's at least more minor but it's still annoying uh it's got dc outs which is good it's a really good thing to see you can't control the power of them though and you also can't fully label them either uh so your, your actual marking options of what these are connected to is limited within the app again that's just probably solvable with an update but you can't control the power i mean that's something that's been in for ages with a rival device do you know what i mean you can set these to whatever you want in terms of percentage output uh, and however it does it whether it's just pulse width modulation or whatever it works you know what i mean so when you connect to something like a dew heater you're not going to want it running 100 percent all night it's just a waste of power and could potentially make your astro images worse by having your optics way hotter than they need to be creating thermals that kind of thing or even stress in some in some scenarios so that really needs to be added some way to control the output uh, i don't want to have to get a device like this and then connect it up to a dew controller as well it just seems backwards so that's another uh point and also building on that point um it seems like the power delivery is a little flaky maybe underrated i want to say um so i use the cable i've always used 
in a similar scenario. So like ASI Air, etc. That sort of cable, the exact same cable. I robbed it and put it on this. Um, and then when I'm running on a telescope that needs a six inch dew heater and a two inch dew heater, so one for the main scope, one for the guide scope, uh, I was experiencing dropouts. So <laughs> even the bridge mode Wi-Fi started dropping out at that point. So to actually get a test done, I needed to unplug all my dew heaters so that the device would have enough power to not drop out. And this is, you know, I've verified this by testing that it's not my power supply. It's it's a regulated power supply. It's a Jackery 500. It's a good power supply. It's fully charged. I did test though, you know, with other cables just to make sure it wasn't a me issue. Uh, I tested with another um, you know, rechargeable lithium regulated power supply that I've got on hand. Same thing. I tested even with a, you know, like a, a plug-in adapter. Same thing. So it seems like it can't put out enough power without dropping out. Or at least my unit can't. But I've got to talk about what I got sent. Do you know what I mean? I'd really... I would really like to have loved this thing. <laughs> I would, because I can see such a strong usage case for it. But as it stands, it's just not... It's not any good. Um, finally, uh, let me just take a note. Can't use a rotator on it. So it seems like it's probably something they're going to add shortly as well, going through the drivers for this. There's a huge stack of drivers, so good on them for loading loads and loads in. Seems like there are a few rotator drivers mixed in there underneath the focuser tab, oddly enough. But you can't use a rotator with it. So that's, again, something that does need adding. It's not critical, do you know what I mean? But it does need adding, I would say. And for me, where I'm at with this is I'm going to have to just sit on it, I guess, unless TubeTech wants it back for research purposes. Maybe they want to look at what the heck is wrong with this one, if it's just a me unit. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to have to sit on it and wait for software updates now before I can even attempt to do the originally planned review of this because I, I wasted, you know, a good five hours i think yesterday night with this trying to get things working uh, and it was a total waste I didn't get a single usable frame didn't even successfully complete polar alignment um actually that brings me on nicely i guess to my last point polar alignment um i can test this on two different mounts an am5 original and an am5n uh and the am5n would report polar alignment errors which i knew to be 108 degrees out from truth in azimuth uh whereas the am5 did report the correct errors so you could you could polar align with an am5 original you can't polar align at least in my case with an am5 n it's just weirdness do you know what i mean it's, it's so it's, it's currently a device with a lot of promise but it's so bug packed at the minute it feels like not even a beta device it's more like some sort of early alpha test or something like that not a great first impression uh, i'm gonna be honest I'm, I'm ever so sorry to be rap like ragging on tube tech with this thing <laughs> i appreciate stuff getting sent out for review but i've got to be honest you know what i mean it was a disaster and it's not all ready to be reviewed in my case as i've said um i have been in contact with my friend Queeve, who's also reviewing one of these things he's had a much better experience than me he managed to get you know a, a good session that kind of thing uh, so it could just it could well be me having issues with the gear that I'm connecting to. So I would again strongly urge you to just Google the Stella Vita or YouTube it if you rather find out as much as you can about your particular equipment that you're going to want to connect one of these things up to. But as it, as it stands, I would hold off. To be honest, I would just wait uh, until the device matures, the implementation matures, and hopefully then, because if they could get this as mature as let's say the even half as mature as the ASI Air. I promise I'm not at all ASI Air fanboy. I'm a little bit, but if they could get it half as mature as that, it would be a world-beating device. I would be recommending this left and right. Do you know what I mean? If they could fix the Wi-Fi too. Because I think it offers a lot of value and, and it could do so much. It's just not there yet. So, uh, yeah. Very much a downer video. But it is what it is. I needed to share my thoughts with you and just be honest about it. As I said, I had planned a much more involved video for this and made some recordings to that effect. Ultimately, I had to just can them all because 
I can't make a review of something that I can't use. So here we are doing this, giving you feedback instead. Hope you've enjoyed. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, look forward to seeing you in a future video. I'm going to go uh, weep for a while, I guess. Time wasted now. Uh, but yeah, that is. Look forward to seeing you in a future video. Take care of yourselves, guys. And with any luck, close guys.